We're here at Weiler Welding, and uh, we're here next to this huge block of dry ice, multiple blocks of dry ice, and Aaron is going to cut one for us. We're going to get 30 pounds and take it back to campus and do some science on it and some other stuff. Thanks for watching Science with Mike, off location here at the welding place. Thanks again. So Aaron's going to cut some dry ice for us. Dry ice is just carbon dioxide. That's a 50 pound block. We're going to try to take 30 pounds back to campus with us. Buck 44 pound, most fun you could have for a buck 44 pound. You ready to hit it. this? All right. I never get to watch this. That seems like it cuts pretty easy there, yeah. Those are about what, 10 pounds? About 10 pounds a piece. 10 pounds a piece? Okay, we'll take, we'll take three of them three back of them? to school with us. Yeah. And I got my, my gloves on and uh, and our cooler. Them? Yeah, well, what yeah. the heck, I guess. Make me do some work. Yeah. I mean, by the way, you might notice that it's um, turning directly to a gas. This is solid CO2. That's sublimation is what it's called. So uh, I forgot what I did and uh, got my gloves because it's super cold. Negative 110 degrees. So if you touch it with your hands, it's gonna burn you. Give you instant frostbite. Not good. Thanks, Aaron. You're welcome. Alrighty, cool. Let's go. We're back on campus and we got a dry ice. And because negative 109 some degrees, gotta handle the dry ice with these gloves. And we are going to take out one of our, oh, they broke. One of them broke. Um, take out our dry ice. Still feels cold through the gloves. Like I said, this is subliming. This is going, see, that's the gas trying to escape. It's not too happy being, okay. Shut up! I'm trying to do a video. Okay, um, what can we do to illustrate that? I have some quart. This is called the quarter dance. This shows you that the gas is always trying to escape. You jab one of these in there. There we go. Another quarter. Kind of hear it vibrating in there. Waving back and forth. That's the quarter dance. I'm gonna take a little piece. I'm gonna take a little, good. So you get, all right. See, they sometimes know it's coming. They know it's, they know the chisel's coming. All right. Now just to show sublimation here, I'm going to um, open up this Ziploc bag. Um, roughly speaking, a gas takes up about a thousand times more space than a liquid or solid that it came from. So really quickly holding it swiftly, take some little bit of solid carbon dioxide and we're gonna put it in the bag. We'll come back to this later, all right? That'll show you how much pressure is being generated. You can almost see it starting to happen immediately. Come back to that later. All right. One way to illustrate the uh, sublimation, fun at Halloween time, if you're careful, remember to use gloves, take some warm water, put a hunk of dry ice in it, and you'll notice that it clings to the surface of the table because dry ice is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is, uh, geez, almost twice as heavy as air, so it goes to the bottom wherever you let it go. Um, I'll try to illustrate. Here's a candle. I can kind of almost pour it. You see it going down, and I can smother this candle by just dousing it with carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide will smother a flame. There you go. 
And that's how a CO2 fire extinguisher works. So uh, um, basically falls wherever it goes, all right? Um, one more thing I want to illustrate is the acid-base properties of CO2. So come on over here with me to the board right now. Carbon dioxide really dissolves well in water. You know that if you drink soda pop or any other sort of carbonated beverage. But what you might not know is that when it does dissolve in water, it actually makes a kind of weak acid called carbonic acid. So you could take seltzer water, for example. It's nothing but carbonated water, but it actually is mildly acidic because it makes carbonic acid. So let's show you how that works right now. I've got some water and we're gonna put some acid base indicator in there. Right now this is pretty close to neutral as water is. And when I put the carbon dioxide in, it's going to turn acidic. And we do that using something called an indicator, which is over there. Here's one that's been bubbling away for a while. Now you might remember that litmus is a, a solution or a, you know, litmus paper, if you ever use litmus paper, it turns red when it's in acid. And so if I take a bunch of litmus and throw it in there, it doesn't have enough litmus to really show you there. You can maybe see a reddish tinge to that. Let's watch it happen with this stuff called universal indicator, which is really based on plant matter. And it'll change the color of the rainbow, just like when we did cabbage juice a couple episodes ago. So I'm going to take a bunch of this, and I'm going to dump it into this water. And it's going to turn bluish because it's pretty much neutral. I should say that's more green. I'm going to carefully take a piece of dry ice and dump it in there. And there it goes to orangish, to almost red instantly. And that's the acid property of carbonic acid. So kind of groovy. By the way, here's our bag about 10 minutes later, and it's feeling pretty firm. Uh, let's just let it go, uh, but way over here. Not a big fan of the explosions when I don't know when they're coming. So next let's do some more stuff with the density of CO2 and then we're going to figure out how to get rid of all this stuff. I think I have an idea. All right. So um, here's a fish aquarium. It's got nothing in it but air at this point. I'm going to finally divide some dry ice and um, more to the fact that this is denser than air. If I put this in to the aquarium, in a bunch of different places. And yeah, it's still whining. Um, and I'm gonna light this candle. The candle will burn initially. Let me get a couple other candles. I've got wax on my fingers. All right. Oh. Well I, well, I guess that was supposed to happen. Let me actually just show that. Um, if I lower this down to where the CO2, remember it's going to fill from top to bottom because it's heavier than air, that candle will start to die right there. A live candle, dying candle, a live Let's see how long it takes to reach this candle. And uh, if I'm lucky, as this fills, and I'm going to wait until this candle goes out, that's how I'll know that this is starting to brim up with the carbon dioxide that's heavier. Uh, you can blow some bubbles and let them land, and they'll maybe levitate. Darn, I always give it away. See, at this point, they'll go to the bottom because it's not full enough of CO2. Now, if we do what we call in science, waiting around a little while, we'll start to see this aquarium fill up right about when this candle starts to struggle for its life. It's struggling. Oh. 
oh, just when you think he's got, he's got a lot of fight in him, doesn't he? It's okay. You donated your life to science, and that's noble. There we go. These bubbles are in limbo, not quite falling due to the density of carbon dioxide. Oh, look at that bad boy. Whoa, that looks like something out of biology right there. Look at that thing. All right, I think it's a zygote. I don't even know if that's correct. Just post comments if I use the wrong term. All right, this is why I never played sports professionally or anything, uh, because I couldn't hit the target. There we go. Look at these little guys now. And what will happen is, as they cool down, they'll get denser, and then they'll sink. Uh, but right now, that's floating on a little blanket of carbon dioxide. Cool. No pun intended. Hey, thanks for watching Science with Mike. Uh, I've got all this extra dry ice. I don't know what to do with it because it'll just be gone tomorrow. No, you know what? I got an idea what we can do. Come with me. We'll take all our leftover dry ice and we'll put it in the Sinclair swimming pool. Everybody out of the pool! Jeez, I got, I got a lot here. I don't think you can even see. It'll take a while. Thanks for watching Science with Mike, and also special thanks to Travis Beatley, our PAC manager. Here's your whistle back. You might want to have that sanitized. Uh, definitely. <laughs> Slobber. <laughs> thanks again.